you tell me something about how the piece was composed? Three card model. Yeah, well, uh, this was uh, in, in 1957 when I was with J.J. Uh, Johnson on a big tour of Europe on a ship. It was some guy who uh, he had made a big oil strike. He was flashing his money around, and I didn't have any money. I still don't have any, but I really didn't have any then. So Wilbur Little and I, so we decided to get him. <laughs> we stayed hang out in the bar on the ship. You know, he'd get us a drink of scotch for 15 cents. So we stayed in the bar most of the time. And so we got the cards. I said, well, listen, I'm going to show him how to play this game, three card, three card money. You know? So I said, all right. And uh, consequently, you know, the game is, uh, you, you, uh, it's like the P game, the shell game, two, two black cards and a red one. And you shuffle them and you see if you can pick up, pick out the, the red cards. So then if you do, you win. If you don't, you lose. So needless to say, I, I, we had a very pleasant trip <laughs> after that. So we oh. call it Three Card Molly. deacon of the, the Trinity Baptist Church. And he actually was one of the founders of this church in Pontiac. My two older sisters, Anna Mae and Melinda, sang in the senior choir. My brother Hank is uh, a great jazz pianist uh, of today. My brother Thad, I think he's a great jazz trumpet player, a great composer. He, he uh showed an interest himself, I guess, when he was small, because he beat on all pots and pans that he could find. He beat them out of shape. <laughs> and and uh, he just decided, I guess, he wanted to be a drummer. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to buy a set of drums. And uh, I had all what the work that I was doing, was, uh, going to school, I had a paper route. And uh, so now I couldn't get any credit, so my sister, Melinda, uh, co-signed, she backed me up. My and, money. <laughs> <laughs> I think we scraped together about $20 or $30, $30 or whatever for a down payment. And uh, I got this set of drums. And uh, so that was it. And uh, I thought that uh, I was, uh, I think I was no 14-year-old boy any prouder than me at that time. <laughs> In the whole world, I think. <laughs> that was really mm -hmm. something. Detroit had uh, all the nightclubs. This is where most of the musicians that were playing modern music, like in Charlie Parker's uh, vein, you know, that the contemporaries of that. A lot of them were living in Detroit and playing around Detroit. And I wanted to be a part of that. When I got out of the service, I got into Billy Mitchell's band, and that became quite famous at the, the Bluebird Inn. We stayed there for about three years. Could you just show me a little bit uh, how you would take the theme of Three Card Molly and develop that into a drum solo? First of all, you know, we're dealing with um, uh, a very uncomplicated uh, form, which is a sort of a com combination of blues and standard form. So, if we understand the melody, then we can understand how the melody or that rhythmic phrase can be developed. So the melody being uh, in terms of, of uh, rhythm. So now to put some substance to it, I'll, at this time, I'll play, it, I'll play it again, and I'll add, say, the bass drum. All right. To 
give it a little more emphasis, I'm going to add the hi-hat to that. I only played the first phrase of the tune that time. This time I'll add the tom toms, I'll add the end, and from there I'll go into another whole course of that uh, piece. Da 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 da. -da. And uh, we'll see how see how that uh, see how that uh, how that how that develops. One, two, three, four. polyrhythmic style to a man and the moon. The poly of, of that word means many, and a rhythm, of course, so it just means many rhythms, and uh, so that's exactly what it is. They're coordinated rhythms. Charlie Mingus. He offered me the position of playing with Bud Powell so that we became the Bud Powell trio with Charlie Mingus and myself. When Bud performed, the club atmosphere was always like a cathedral. Nobody talked, nobody drank. I would very often find myself wiping tears out of my eyes. knowledge of Coltrane first was from uh, his playing with Miles Davis in that group. At one point, Miles asked me to substitute for Philly Joe Jones. So I met John Coltrane, and I liked him. I thought it was a... I'd never heard anybody play saxophone like that. He asked me at that time, would I be willing to work with him? And I said, yes. <laughs> He was a very deeply sensitive and uh, religious person, a very warm person. So uh, we had a very congenial, very uh, close uh, relationship with each other, all of us. It was sort of like the perfect foil for my ideas. You know, and the way that I played, it fit in completely with the style and with all of the, the dynamics and everything that that, that group was using. And it just. Uh, it was like a hand in glove, you know, a perfect. Uh... I played with other groups, and uh, I've, I've had sometimes severe criticism about the way I played. I didn't try to uh, comply to standard forms. But uh, with John, I was sort of, everything that I had learned up to that point, it gave it significance. We didn't have to uh, converse. I think everything was in telepathy. 